Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the smallest 10 gigabit ethernet adapter I have tested to date. This one from Orico, and it's called their 10 gig ethernet adapter. This will work with Thunderbolt devices with three, four, or five. It will also work with USB 4 devices, but not USB 3 devices. So if your computer has USB 4.0, there's a good chance that this will work with it. And in today's video, we are testing it on a USB 4-based mini PC from B-Link. We'll have a review of this one coming up soon. This is an AMD-based machine with USB 4 in the back, and that's what we have plugged in here for this test. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Arico. However, they have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this new Ethernet adapter is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $159. This is a little less expensive than many of the other 10 gig Ethernet adapters that I have looked at over the last couple of years, but it's much more expensive than some of the 2.5 gigabit devices you might see out there that plug into just about any USB port. So if you really need 10 gig, I would look at something like this, but for many people, 2.5 gig is more than adequate, and you'll save a good amount of money in the process as well. There is not much to the hardware here. You just have your USB Type-C Thunderbolt port here in the back, along with the Ethernet connection here, and of course, this is using uh, 10 G base T, so you have a uh, just a regular uh, Ethernet cable plugging in. You'll want to have at least a CAT 6A cable on there. Now, this is powered by the bus, and like other 10 gig adapters, it gets very warm over time. Now, many of the other adapters I've looked at were much larger in size, and they had these big heat sinks on them. This one does not, so it has a fan that runs. Initially, you won't hear the fan. But once it's been plugged in for a while, you will hear the fan, and it doesn't have any variation to its speed. It just runs constantly. And I will say, sitting on the desk right now, the Ethernet adapter is much louder than the computer that it's plugged into insofar as fan noise is concerned. So if you don't like noise, this is not the adapter for you. It is quite noisy, and it's something that you're going to hear. Now, the chipset on this one is a Marvel Action with a Q. And I have not looked at a Marvel Action with a Q chipset-based Ethernet adapter before, but it did work on my Mac, and it is working on Windows. One thing I noticed that I had to do first on the Windows side was check Windows Update for a driver. Once it installed that driver and I rebooted, it came up. But on initial plug-in, it did not. So Windows has the driver, but if you don't see it working right away, go check Windows Update and do the restart. On the Mac, it worked right when I plugged it in. So we're gonna do two speed tests here. The first one is the speedtest.net app that we're gonna to run to my ISP. Now, don't hate me, but I have a 10 gigabit symmetrical connection here at the house. And one of the things that I've noticed is that you rarely get these kinds of speeds when you are on the internet. In fact, it's often hard to get the speed test app to give you the full bandwidth because the servers you're connecting to may not have enough to give you. So this is what I'm getting out to the internet right now. This test always varies based on traffic conditions. I am currently shooting this video at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, kind of the peak of internet traffic for the day, I would imagine. So this is not the result that I sometimes see on my computer upstairs at night. So what we're gonna do is something that's a little more accurate, which is testing over our local network to see what kind of speeds we can get between two devices that are both connected at 10 gigabits each. All right, so now we're gonna run a less visually appealing test, but one that should give us a good sense of the raw throughput here. So what we're gonna do is run an iPerf test, and I have a computer upstairs connected to my 10 gigabit network, and we'll let this test run. The numbers you wanna look for are the ones at the bottom. So you can see we're averaging about 9.48 gigabits per second. That's about what you should see out of something like this, considering the overhead that you have with an adapter here. So this is pretty close to 10 gig. I am happy with that. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick, if I can remember the command, is reverse the order here. So we're going to have it go in the opposite direction now where that computer is sending us data. And when we run this, you can see that we're still getting 9.4 whatever <laughs> gigabits per second here. So it looks as though we are truly operating here at 10 gigabit over a USB 4 based mini PC. 
And of course, these results are what I saw on my Thunderbolt devices a little bit earlier. So in conclusion here, I found this to perform as advertised, and I do like the form factor. What I don't like about it is the fan. It is quite noisy. The good news is, is that although the fan is noisy, it is keeping the device operating at its peak performance because this has been on now for about five or six hours. I've been hitting the network with it throughout and it hasn't lost any of its performance. So that is good, but you have to put up with the noise. So if you don't mind something a little bit larger, there are some similar devices that will also work over USB 4. The one I use day to day is from OWC. It's got a big heat sink. It is a pretty big device, but it is silent and you're not gonna hear that fan running. But if you wanna save some bucks and have something that's a little more portable, this will certainly get the job done and give you the full performance. But just remember that even though you might have 10 gigs of internet where you are or seven or eight, you're never really going to see that level of speed on the network. So in many cases, a 2.5 gigabit adapter is more than adequate for doing things over the internet. But of course, having this kind of bandwidth locally can make a pretty big difference. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.